Hello everyone, in this video we're having a look at the new state machine module. This is a module many have been looking forward to, so I thought it was a good idea to cover the official release. Before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the absolutely amazing support. So let's get started. So here we are in our scene, and the nice thing with state machine is that it's a clean way to basically organize all of your actions, triggers and conditions as well as having an easy way to set them up in a new scene with just a couple of clicks. So first off we're going to try the player here. So I'm going to add a couple of the basics. So let's add the player shooter component. Character melee and we'll add the state machine component. So let's create a state machine first and then we'll go through the information displayed in that component as well. And I'll create a second one which I won't use yet but already have it. There we go and we'll call this NPC. So once I drag this in, which works quite similar to a behavior graph in that sense, we'll get some information. And as you can see, we can see exactly how many triggers, actions and conditions are available, which is pretty cool. We have a play mode, so on start, on enable and manual. So manual speaks for itself, you can manually trigger this state machine. Uh, on start is when the scene starts and on enable would be, for example, if you instantiate or spawn in um, a character um, and then you use on enable. Parameters um, works with the blackboard so um, just like you're used to with behavior so that's pretty nice uh, pretty intuitive. So let's open this up so rather than setting up all of your um, state machines in uh, all of your triggers actions and conditions in the uh, scene itself you're doing this here so let's try something so I'm going to add a trigger and all of these triggers are the same as you know what you're um, what you're used to by default so let's do an on key down oh I'm looking for the E sorry about that And as you can see, when we right click, we have actions, triggers, create a substate machine and copy. So copy is really cool. We can literally copy paste uh, stuff from um, one state to the other or within the state, um, which is really nice. But you can copy the entire state machine as well, which is really nice. So let's create actions. Now, you might have seen that there are no conditions and uh, that's just not a bad thing because they are there they're just uh, organized a different way so as you can see once we press on this little arrow um, we have our conditions here now invert is here as well so you can literally you know invert it so let's look for um, well, let's just go to melee because they're called the same. Is armed, is unarmed, so I'm going to do is unarmed first. And let's create a new set of actions. There we go. Is armed. So in the first set of actions, we're going to draw our weapon. I'm just going to pick the default sword weapon. And in the next one, we're going to holster. No sheath, sorry about that. And um, I mean, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So, you know. And let's create a new one.
and another one. Cool. So I'm doing this really quick just to show you, um, you know, the kind of usual setup. So what you're um, used to, but then in a different manner. So there we go. So I can remove uh, this, I think, and yeah, there we have it. So what we're doing here with E, we're drawing or holstering our weapon. With mouse down, we're inputting our melee attack. With the right mouse down, we're starting block, and when we let go, we uh, stop our block. So as you can see, now we have four triggers, two conditions, and actions. So drawing or holstering, inputting our melee, and start and stopping block. Really simple, but as you can see, really clean solution. So everything will be in the state machine itself. Nothing is in the scene. And you can literally just copy over the state machine from project to project, which is really, really nice. So that's a really cool thing. So let's see how we can do things slightly differently with, for example, a uh, NPC. There we go. We're going to keep on start as well. And I'm going to add two markers to our scene. So <laughs> perfect. So when we open this up, we have a default set of actions, which is this one, empty of course. So let's create a new set of actions. And I want these to basically go from one to the other. So basically creating a sort of loop of actions. Now, this is the set of actions where we're going to add a weight, then move. Um, invoker going to do a list variable here so we're going to go from one to the other and I'm going to put that on the camera just because we have a direct reference let's do random there we go and once he gets there I want him to jump there we go now I'm going to add a condition here that we're only going to go back once he's grounded. So uh, character property invoker is grounded. Perfect. Now I actually want this to uh, play first. So I want this to be the default. So the way we go about this is right click and set as default. Now this set of actions will play first and then these will. So let's save this. Now on the camera that I mentioned, we do need list variables, so let's add them. Two objects, marker one and two. Perfect. And we'll go into play mode. Now, as you can see, our character uh, NPC is, uh, you know, jumping then going to the next and etc, etc. This is randomized, so there's only two of them. But if you add more, random uh, becomes a lot more interesting, obviously. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty simple. So as you can see, it's a really, really nice way to uh, set up 
um, actions, conditions, and triggers within your actual state machines. And the nice thing here is we can copy these over, set them to new scenes, um, copy them over to new projects, and easily have your default setup ready. So like me, for example, I have a lot of projects, so this would be a way to easily go from one to the other um, and just, you know, copy over all of my basics. And for me, this would mo mostly be for the player as you're often repeating the same steps for the player. So like I showed you here, I think I've done this in I don't know how many videos on projects, something really basic, but it's something you always, um, well, not always, but most of the time you'll need. And that's the true strength here, just ease of use and obviously organization. Our scene is incredibly clean. Uh, there's, you know, as you can see, there's nothing really here. Um, and that's truly the power of this. So, same machine is out now. I'd recommend having a look. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.